Though yours. What is God rules? Amen. He's got rules. You want whatever he's keeping for you? Come through the right channel. Do it the right way. Play it according to the rules and you get what you want. But no matter how you pray and cry and roll on the floor and belly ache and whine and grumble, you will not get it. Can you see it? Can you see why some folks pray a long time and they still don't get it? Hallelujah. Because they haven't come the right way. There are rules in this book. Praise the Lord. God's people have always been a people of prophecy. God called them out by prophecy, built them up by prophecy, sent them out by prophecy, and has blessed them so much by prophecy. Prophecy is so important. But we'll have to define prophecy. What is prophecy? Prophecy is foretelling, telling ahead of time, and foretelling, <laughs> telling forward. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Praise God. To foretell means to tell ahead of time things concerning a person or people or things or events. And then to tell forth means to speak forth. To tell out. Okay. What is inside? It's not being spoken out, but it's in the mind of God. So you speak forth. You tell it forth. You deliver the message. You declare it like somebody said. So it is the foretelling of events. And the foretelling of things concerning people places or events in the mind of God. Which means it's got to do with two things. One is to speak ahead of time and the other is to bring out that which is a mystery or is hidden or is yet unveiled. Do you understand? So that's prophecy. And prophecy is so important. And God shows us this in the scripture. I said we are a people of prophecy. Prophecy is powerful. To be able to tell ahead of time, you must have revelation. To be able to tell forth something that is in the mind of God and it, and it works... You must have power. See? There must be revelation. There must be ability. There must be power to back it up, to make it work. Which means it must always have a supernatural origin. It must always have a supernatural origin. So we have here two kinds. Of prophecies. It is either you're telling ahead of time or you're speaking out the word of power. A word for the now, it may not concern tomorrow, it may have to do with now, it may have to do with this hour, it may have to do with you and your now, but the word will have power that makes it work. Amen. Amen. And you know, many times people are waiting for God to do something and they are praying. And they are praying and crying and talking to the Lord. And fasting and pleading and hoping that He would hear them. They're like the guy who's given his money to the bank and he goes in there without following the rules. And he's crying out there, I got my money here, please give it to me. Oh, I got my money here. Doesn't matter how long he cries, if it disturbs him too much, they arrest him. Praise God. They'll get rid of him. They'll tell him, if you have money here, come the right way. <laughs> he said God's spirit carried him to a valley that was full of bones. Dead means bones. 
And as he looked in, he saw the bones that they were very dry. Many, many bones. The valley was full of bones. Verse 3. And he said unto me, the Spirit of God said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. In other words, it's up to you. (laughs) Hallelujah. It's up to you. Can these bones live? God said, yeah, but that's up to you. Oh, God said, it's not up to me. Amen. It's not up to me. God is up to you. No, it's not up to me. He said unto me, verse 3, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Oh Lord God, it's up to you. <laughs> you see that there? Hallelujah. Verse 4, Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones. They are, I like this. He said, Prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them, See, God's teaching him how to do it. God said, look at this valley full of bones. Can these bones leave? They were very dry. Man said, Lord, thou knowest. God said, no, not that way. You talk to these bones. Prophesy. Again, he said unto me, verse 4, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, Oh, he told him exactly what to say in his prophecy. He said, oh, ye dry bones. He's talking to the bones. Like when he told Moses to talk to the rock. Like Jesus talked to the tree. He says to Ezekiel, talk to the bones. Prophesy to the bones. And say, oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Hallelujah. Behold, I will curse breath to enter into you and ye shall leave. And I will lay sinews upon you. And will bring up flesh upon you. And cover you with skin. And put breath in you. And he shall leave and he shall know that I am the Lord. He's talking to dry bones. Hallelujah. He's talking to dry bones. I told somebody some years ago. back. I said you know you can talk to your car. I said you can prophesy to your car. He hung up that thing, you know, no more tires, nothing. He just hung it up. You can have no money to fix it. He just left it there. It was gone. I said, prophesy to the car. Let's go on with this first. Are you still there? He said, verse 6, and I'll lay some news upon you. Come on, glory. And I'll bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And you shall leave and you shall know that I am the Lord. God said to the man, Prophesy upon these bones and say, O ye dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. God shall cause bread to enter into you, and ye shall live. Amen. Verse 7, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. I mean, every bone was looking for his member. Hallelujah. What a noise. I like this. Verse 8. When I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. They now looked like corpses. They were no longer dry bones. Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. This is man. What's he talking about? He means you can prophesy to the things that you want changed. You can prophesy to God who's got the power. He said prophesy to the wind. The wind represents the spirit of God. Look at this. When I be here, he says, no, verse 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath. The Hebrew rendering says, O breath of life. Come from the four winds, O breath. And breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And a breath came into them. And they lived and stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. Oh, hallelujah. How people have gone through life. 
the wrong way. He said in the book of Joel, chapter 2, from verse 28, here is a prophecy. I love it when God prophesies. Look at it. From verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterward, afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said. And in the remnants whom the Lord shall call. Hallelujah. This is your importance. What a prophecy. What a prophecy. And something happened on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. And all those guys are making noise. And they were dancing and swerving from side to side. Verse 16 chapter 2. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. He said, I'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And they shall prophesy. Why did he talk about this? Why didn't he say, and they shall receive miracles? Why did he say, and they shall prophesy? Because prophecy is so important. God ruled the people by prophecy. He led them by prophecy. Prophecy is the spoken word of God. It is the revealed word of God. He led them by prophecy. The man who prophesied spoke with the ability of God's spirit. Now God says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. In other words, everybody in the kingdom will have this ability of God. To prophesy, bring God's word to come to pass and change things and affect their own life. In other words, you can have glory to God, your own destiny in your hands. Hallelujah. What your future is going to be is in your hands. Great knowledge. How inspiring. To know nobody can change my life. In a way that brings me any disadvantage. I can have my destiny right in my hands. I can control my destiny. By the power of God made available to me. Oh, people say, we well, don't believe that. Well, it doesn't matter. You don't have to believe it. God didn't say you must believe it. He said, if you do, you'll be blessed. If you don't, you'll be damned. Praise God. What have you done with what you have believed so far? God didn't say they must believe it. The only thing is, if you want it, you've got to believe it first. <laughs> yeah. You can't get it without accepting it. Now he says to us, It shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. And they shall see things. I'm not talking about seeing things like scary things. No, he said the young men shall see visions and the old men shall dream dreams. Glory to God. The important thing is, they, is that they will see things. Is that alright? Visions or dreams, they will see things. Amen? They will see with spiritual eyes. They shall prophesy. Prophecy is so important. He said in the last days, says God. I'll pour out of my spirit. Watch it. I'll pour out of my spirit. So what's going to happen when you pour out your spirit, Lord? Yeah. One. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And they shall see visions and prophesy. So I open their eyes and I open their mouths. Good. That's for them. Then I will show signs and wonders. And anybody who cries out for deliverance shall be delivered. Three great things. 
So now I, I'm not in need of deliverance. Amen. And he said, You show signs and wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire, vapors of smoke. So that's up to him. But then there's the one that's up to me. He says, When the Spirit is poured out, I'll prophesy. And I want to know what he means. Does he mean, I'll say, Thus said the Lord, Jesus is coming again. Yeah, he's coming again. But that's not going to affect your job. Hallelujah. It's more than that. He means they will speak for the words of power. They will speak by revelation. They will cause things to come to pass. This is where the power works. The dynamic ability to cause changes. Now of course your prophecy should never contradict the word of God. If it does, you got it from the pit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It should be based on this book. Prophecy is important. Somebody says, I don't like prophecy because some people lie with it. You tell the truth then. The only way to prove they lied is to tell the truth. God said in the last days, I poured my spirit upon all flesh. And the sons and the daughters shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. Oh, they can change things with their mouths, with their tongues. They shall prophesy. I said prophecy means that you are foretelling, telling ahead of time what is going to happen. And then telling forth, bringing out, declaring the word of God, the mind of God, the purpose of God. Declaring it. If you don't speak it forth, it will have no power. It will not work. It's like having the Bible here. It's all written. The gospel is here. Until somebody tells it out, it will have no power. The name of Jesus is in the book. Until somebody uses it, the demons will not run. You cannot carry this Bible and put it on somebody's head and expect him to get healed. You'll have to say, be healed. Prophecy. See, we can speak God's word concerning us. This is the reason I tell people, don't curse the church of Jesus Christ. Don't say wrong things about the church. Don't say the church is weak. We need revival. No! Say the power of God is going to move in the church. See, tell. Oh, glory. Talk about the wind of God's spirit that's going to work in the church. Because he said in the last days, sir, God, I'll pardon my spirit upon all flesh. Things are going to work. Amen. Look at Israel. Israel messed up. They blew it so many times. But the prophets will come and they'll say, a remnant shall be delivered. Always they prophesy because God knew that the power to keep the people in the kingdom would rest in the power of prophecy. You'll have to prophesy. You'll have to prophesy. He said there is hope in your end. Glory to God. He said that to Isha. He said weep not anymore. There is hope in your end. I'll say to the not, keep not back. That's what he said. And that's going on today. When it comes to your life, you have to prophesy. Prophesy for your life. Prophesy your future. Hear me. If you don't know it, every time you speak about your life and about your future and about your body, you are actually prophesying. The only thing is, you may be a false prophet. Yeah, because huh, if God has said this about you and you say something else, the Bible says, then who's telling a lie? You or God? God cannot lie. If God said you're a new creature and you say, well, I don't feel like one, I don't think I am, I think I need to be born again, again, then you are the one lying. It's not God who's lying. Oh, I can't just, my life is just, I, I don't understand myself anymore. Here some people talk. I don't understand myself anymore. My whole future, I just can't. There's, it, there's like no hope. No hope. I'm just living. I'm just existing. No! Oh! I wish you would understand the power of prophecy. And know that from that zero point where you are, you can chart your course. Determine your future. You can have faith in what God has done. You can have faith in what God has done. Your God's property, you're bought with a price. Amen. 
You're going to prophesy. Prophesy about your life. Prophesy about your life. I've been prophesying about me a long time. Hallelujah. I've been prophesying about me about a long time by the power of the Spirit as I pray. Oh, this man is moving forward. As a father in the name of Jesus, just like Isaac, the Bible says he walks great, he grew great, he became so great, the Philistines envied him, they couldn't do nothing about it. So am I moving forward in the name of Jesus and all hindrances are destroyed. Yeah, I'm moving forward. I talk like that, no devil can shut me up. Hallelujah. That's the way I talk. I dwell in health in the name of Jesus. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my Lord. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. <laughs> yeah, I have a goodly heritage. You see, that's, that's a way to speak. Take your Bible like this and prophesy about your life. Never be cast down. You will never find me cast down. Say, well, well, if I don't find you, doesn't mean you're not cast down. I don't get cast down. I don't. Is it because I don't want to? First, I don't want to, of course. But secondly, I cannot be. See, I, I put this thing unstuffed inside me. You understand what I'm talking about? I just cannot be cast down. Cast down by what? What will it be? The lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. Yeah, I have a goodly heritage. What does that mean? I come, I find out what God's done for me. See, he said, I'll divide the land for you for an inheritance. And I found out, you know, the land has been divided. So I said, where, where, where's the border? So he says, this line, this land. Oh Lord, the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. Yeah, I have a goodly heritage. Can you see that? He has given me a good land. That's what he's talking about. He said, I found out the, the, the portion of my land. It's the best one he gave to me. The lines have fallen onto me in pleasant places. Yeah, I have a goodly heritage. Don't say, oh man, I, I, my, my life is dry, dry, dry. What do you mean dry? Doesn't matter where I find myself. The lines have fallen onto me in pleasant places. Hallelujah. Wow. Woo, glory. He says, I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel. See that? The Lord had given me counsel. This is what the Lord is doing right now. He's giving you counsel on the inside. The man prophesied, says, I bless the Lord who's given me counsel. Amen. When God gives you counsel, you can never be confused. So he says, I'm just confused. <laughs> I'm just confused. No! I bless the Lord who's given me counsel. Glory to God. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. In the night seasons. Instead of crying out of your bed and saying, my head is heavy, something's pursuing me. Let your reins instruct you in the night seasons. Amen. I have set the Lord always before me. This is, oh Lord, this is the secret. What are you looking at? I have set the Lord always before me. <laughs> because he's at my right hand. And I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is God. Oh, oh, this is how to pray, brother. Don't stay there whining and say, I don't know why I didn't get the job. After I was more qualified than the others, I don't understand these things. The bad luck has followed me for so many years. <laughs> what do you mean bad luck? Prophesy about your future. I don't know no bad luck. Everything is working out for my good. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. That makes prayer exciting. Amen. Oh, Lord. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also, this is so you, now watch this. When I got down here, when he said my flesh also shall rest in hope, I said I want to know what David is talking about here because I don't have to agree with you in everything. I found out he was talking about dying. I, me, I'm not dying. Hey boy, you have me a long time. I'm not dying. So when he said my flesh also shall rest in hope, I said my flesh ain't going down. <laughs> Lord then he said for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell I said you must be talking about Jesus you know that he's talking about Jesus that's true and Jesus is the one the Bible says that David when he spoke this it had to do with the Lord 
See, when you prophesy, you, you find the spirit of prophecy begin to walk in you in such a way that you talk about, you talk mysteries. Mysteries. Glory. So he began to prophesy about Jesus. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Oh. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. See, he's talking about Jesus. Thou wilt show me the path of life. Mm, he comes back now to us again in thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand there are oh, oh pleasures evermore see when you serve the lord there's pleasure all the time you understand i don't understand those guys and just as though they say they say be sober be vigilante 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 i'm always vigilant amen be sober be vigilant doesn't mean be sober. It's spiritual. Not your face. What can you see? He says, I have set the Lord always before me. Who do I see? The Lord. Hallelujah. Who do I see? The Lord. Chest out, chin up. All right. And elbow the devil. Glory to God. Pull your way on through. This man is coming. Hallelujah. Woo, glory!